Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna talk about SCP exchange rate and foreign currency valuation. This will be part 2 of the video. If you're interested in watching part 1, I will leave the link down below. For this video, we're gonna focus on foreign currency valuation or FCV. And then towards the end, we're going to have some sort of summary table where we wrap up everything, including exchange rate and currency configurations. I will be using my blog post as the main teaching aid for this tutorial. I will leave the link down in the description box below. You can always refer to that for guidance. When we talk about foreign currency valuation in SAP, I want you guys to recall from the previous video that we associated this as a necessary step during financial closing. And this basically brings us to the question, why do we perform FCV or foreign currency valuation during the financial closing? I want you guys to recall that the goal of financial closing is to be able to create and finalize the financial statements of a company. So, for example, let us consider that Company A is based in Belgium. This means that Company A's financial statements would most likely show a currency of euros. When we talk about Company A, this company would not be limited to transactions within Belgium. Let us add onto the scenario, let's say that this company will have several customers in other countries such as South Korea, America, Japan, you name it. Because of this, you would now expect existing transactions in SAP with the KRW currency and all the other currencies involved. Okay, we've got several different currencies involved, several transactions dealing with those types of currencies aside from euros. At the end of the day, or when we complete the financial closing, we want to be able to have an accurate financial report or accurate financial report, the amounts being realistic, truthful, and this also means that the financial reports would show company A's local currency, which is euros. Why do we perform FCV during financial closing? The key word here is because of the financial statements. We need it to be accurate. We need to consider that there are several currencies involved in the transactions. Next question is, what is covered by foreign currency valuation? I mentioned here that when we execute FCV in SAP during the financial closing, we use transaction code FAGL underscore FCV or F.05, it basically covers the following scope. First off is open items in foreign currency. We're talking about customer, vendor, and GL open items, those with foreign currency. For the second one, we are considering general ledger balance sheet accounts, also in foreign currency. Now let's move on to the transaction code. And we're going to start off with FAGL underscore FCV. You'll see this screen below. And if you want to go through this in detail, feel free to go to the blog post and read through it. So there are several steps and some additional insights that you may want to know. I would suggest that before you actually run this program, you need to select the execute test run mode first so you get an insight as to you know what to expect. Or if you're doing this for the first time, it helps to see the test run results and understand what it's trying to do. You'll see that there are several fields here. You can enter those that are applicable. For example, I entered company code 0001 as an example, valuation key date as well as valuation area. And you'll see as well several tabs such as posting criteria, open items for subledger, GL accounts, GL account balances, and some output or technical settings. Notice that the tabs basically coincide with whatever is mentioned over here. I did include some keynotes that you may want to read up on. I don't want to make this a super long video. So over here, I included valuation key date notes. Uh, what it means, what is going to happen. Going back to the same screen, if you're done with the execute test run and 
you feel that the results are okay for you, you're ready to proceed with the real deal, I would suggest that you select posting mode place evaluation and batch input session. So what this does is it's not going to post the valuation right then and there immediately. What it's going to do is that it's going to create a batch input session. Make sure to define the name over here in the field. If you scroll down, I did mention that you may want to opt for this type of approach to keep track or have some additional control before the posting is final. So SAP is going to create a batch input session which you can access through SM35 transaction code and you can process the session in foreground just so you get an idea of you know what SAP is doing when it's posting the valuation entries. If you want to undo or reset the FCV postings, you can enter the same parameters as you did before and simply select the reset valuation checkbox. So this is the checkbox over here. And make sure to enter the reason for reset. So select a reason code. For those of you who are using classical ledger, you can use transaction code F.05 where you'll see the sample screen below. There are a bit of differences over here, but I did include a screenshot as an example. For valuation method, I set it to OPN, which stands for Open Item Valuation, for example. And for valuation in currency type, I did mention 10. So in this example, let's say that it stands for company code currency. What does this mean? This would basically tell SAP to consider company A's company code 001 over here with the currency of euros. Similar to the previous explanation, you can filter out or narrow down your scope according to your need by specifying the values in other tabs over here such as open items, GL balances, so on and so forth. You can also enter a batch input session name, like over here, I mentioned it is going to be MEC underscore P05 underscore FCV. So that means if I execute this and go to transaction code SM35, I will see the same session name there for my processing. For the results example of running FCV, it would look something like this. You'll see that the foreign currency is mentioned over here. You have the specific document number, the amount in foreign currency, amount in local currency, so let's say in euros, the revaluation rate, exchange rate, posting date, new difference, so on and so forth. So for this example, the document type is KR, which stands for vendor invoice. You'll also see that there's a new difference of negative 5.002 over here on the last column. And in order for you to understand or visualize how it's being computed or what it means, you can refer to the summary image down below. It's quite um, detailed. So I simply put the vendor invoice document over here, the document type the foreign currency amount, and the local currency amount. So if you're interested to know how the new difference column is being computed, there is some sort of simple formula over here and the breakdown of these amounts given the entries over here. So around May 20, the exchange rate was 0 0.00074, for example. And on May 31, the exchange rate was 0 0.0073. So this is where the concept of exchange rate maintenance applies. The exchange rate today may not necessarily be the same rate tomorrow. This is what the example is trying to depict. So given the difference between these rates on the mentioned dates, the valuation run will pull the entries from the corresponding exchange rate maintenance, which is OB08, considering the validity date. Now, once everything is computed, you have the new difference. 
Upon posting, you will see that the exchange rate adjustment should be posted for the exchange rate general ledger accounts. You'll see over here that the posting created a GL account document, and you'll see that the line items include the 5.002 that was computed. The corresponding GL accounts will be the unrealized exchange rate adjustment. There will be corresponding GL accounts for this, and you'll see that the document header text will have FC valuation for SAP F100. This time, we're going to talk about the configuration for SAP foreign currency valuation. The first thing that you want to do is define your valuation methods, and that is through transaction code OB59. Here, you simply maintain the valuation method. From our example a while ago, I entered OBN. So this is the configuration for that valuation method. I want to be able to evaluate open items, for example, for vendor. So I just enter these. And when I'm done with that, I click on the magnifying glass. And once you click on the magnifying glass, you'll have this type of setting. This is a standard example for this type of setup. So you'll see that the valuation procedure is set to always evaluate. It's going to post per line item and create a document type SA, which was what we posted a while ago. So SAP created an SA GL account document. That is what we set up over here. And we also mentioned the exchange rate determination. So for both the debit and credit balance, we entered letter M, which was what we configured in our previous video for exchange rates. Once you're done with this, you can go to OBA1 transaction code. This allows you to prepare automatic postings for vendor currency valuation. This is where you set up the GL accounts concerned for the FCV run. Recall that in our document that was posted a while ago, SAP was able to determine the GL account. That is what we're trying to consider at this point. You'll notice that in the screenshot below, the loss and gain related GL accounts are reflected in the posted documents. So when you run FCV, it's going to consider this type of setup. If we look at the example image below, the GL account is here, the chart of account is here, and I entered the GL accounts involved. Additional information for you to consider is the vendor master data. So for example, vendor 1234533, this is our sample vendor account as seen previously. We have company code 0001 and we have reconciliation account 55000. You'll notice that this type of account, reconciliation account, corresponds to the GL account that we specified in the OBA1 maintenance. So we have the same value over here and over here. This means that if we execute the FCV run for open items under the sample vendor account, which is SOL, it will consider the maintained reconciliation account in its master data. I did add the same image that I showed you a while ago you'll see that, okay, the GL accounts we mentioned are indicated here. 50010, 50010 is over here, and 11020, which is, which is the entries over here. That's basically it for the high-level overview of foreign currency valuation, which included the process and the configuration and how it works. This time, we're going to summarize everything. I did organize them per type. For currency, we have the following transaction codes and the corresponding tables involved. For exchange rate, maintenance, and configuration, you have the following transaction codes and their corresponding tables as well. And when we talk about foreign currency valuation, we have the following paths and the transaction codes as well as the corresponding tables. I did include a legend in case there is some confusion. So basically, 
CRCY corresponds to currency, EXRT corresponds to exchange rate, and FCB will be for foreign currency valuation. That's basically it for this video. I do hope this helps you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.